Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and to create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1011 of our trek, and it is Wisdom Wednesday. Creating a biblical worldview is important in order to have a proper perspective on today's current events. To establish a biblical worldview, it is required that we also have a proper understanding of God's Word. Especially in our Western cultures, we do not fully understand the scriptures from the mindset and the culture of the authors. In order to help us all have a better understanding of some of the more obscure passages in God's Word, we are investing Wisdom Wednesdays reviewing a series of essays from one of today's most prominent Hebrew scholars, Dr. Michael S. Heiser. He has compiled these essays into a book titled, I Dare You Not to Bore Me with the Bible. When we think of wizards, it brings to mind some of the fantasy novels with Merlin, Dumbledore, or some of the well-known tales about wizards. Today's essay we will explore, The Great Wizard Meets Philip and Peter. The book of Acts is a favorite among preachers, so you are likely to be familiar with the showdown in Acts chapter 8 verses 9 through 24 between Peter and Simon, the great wizard or sorcerer. Luke tells us that Simon had practiced his magic in the city of Samaria. Listen to Luke's account in Acts chapter 8 verses 9 through 11. A man named Simon had been a sorcerer there for many years, amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. Everyone, from the least to the greatest, often spoke of him as the Great One, the power of God. They listened closely to him because for a long time he has astounded them with his magic. Simon heard the gospel preached by Philip and became a believer in Christ, but later, after Peter's arrival, he tried to purchase the power of the Holy Spirit from Peter. His name, consequently, has not been remembered for any great deeds, but the word simony, which is the buying or selling of ecclesiastical privileges, for example, pardons or benefices. But is that all there is to the story? Well, that's hardly the truth. Don't look away now or you'll miss what's behind the magic. Let's look at how the first century audience would have comprehended the episode in the Sumerian setting. That Simon was referred to by the people of the Sumerian city, the Great One, the power of God, is significant. The title comes from the Samaritan Targum, the Aramaic translation of the Sumerian Hebrew Bible, known as the Sumerian Pentateuch. In the Sumerian Targum, the Hebrew word El, or God, is translated Hila, or power. God is then called Great, or Rab. Not surprisingly, the Great One, the power of God, was used in the Samaritan hymns and writings as a substitute for the divine name, much in the same way that the Orthodox Jews use Kashim, or the name, instead of pronouncing the divine name of Yahweh. But how could the Samaritan speak of Simon as though he were God? While Simon was able to do amazing things, we aren't told if what he was doing was something he picked up by learning magical trickery or enablement from a demonic power, but the effect was the same. Second, the plural of power, or Helen, was also used by the Samaritans of angels. Like many Jews and Christians, Samaritans considered one particular angel, the one in whom Yahweh's name dwell, which is found in Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 through 23, was considered the embodied Yahweh, known to us as Jesus Christ. Since this angel was viewed as the physical manifestation of the true God, the Great One, the power of God, Simon's acts of magical power had convinced many Samaritans that he, too, was a fleshly manifestation of God. It's easy to see how Luke, writing in full knowledge of the incarnation of God in Christ, would have sought to use this encounter. The drama is palpable. Philip had taken the message that God had become man in Christ Jesus to Samaria, where they already had their own incarnate deity in Simon, the great wizard or sorcerer or referred to as the Great One, the power of God. Luke records that the power of gospel broke through to Simon, moving him to embrace the message of Philip. And when he saw the signs and miracles Philip performed, the Great One, or the power of God, which Simon is referred to, was drained of his power. Well, so much for all his sorcery. 
From Luke's account, Simon must have realized very quickly that his own repertoire of tricks, however stunning they were to the masses, fell far short of what he had seen from Philip. Simon's conversion reads that it was quite genuine. Luke is careful to note, though, that Simon saw the powerful deeds of Philip only after he had believed and began accompanying Philip in the city, as we read in Acts chapter 8, verse 13. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized. He began following Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles Philip performed. It was not until after his conversion that he saw the true power of God. Luke tells us that when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the gospel had reached the Samaritans, the people hated by pure Jews for centuries, as referenced in John chapter 4, verse 9, that they sent Peter and John not to investigate whether it was true, but to pray for the Samaritan believers that they might receive the same Holy Spirit, which is mentioned in Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, that had abided in them since the explosion of the gospel at Pentecost, which is mentioned in Acts chapter 2. This alone is a powerful message. These two Jewish men, who had grown up with their own prejudices about the Samaritan, didn't doubt that the grace of God included the people that they had scorned. Nothing Jesus had promised was to be withheld from them. Unfortunately, Simon had a lot to learn about the real great power. When Simon saw that the Samaritans, upon whom Peter and John laid their hands, had received the Holy Spirit, no doubt evidence in some tangible, powerful way, he wanted to experience the power himself. And that was somewhat understandable. But where Simon went wrong, he was trying to pay for that power, and this act would have been second nature to him. Acts chapter 8, verses 18 and 19. But we see that Peter rebuked him harshly, and Simon repented immediately. Acts chapter 8, verses 20 through 24. Nevertheless, Simon's name lives on in infamy. Because of his on-the-spot repentance, not to mention the fact that he had probably only been a believer at most for a couple of weeks, it seems somewhat unreasonable to vilify Simon. In Simon, we have a man who was one day hailed as the incarnate God, but the next day repented at the words of a couple fishermen. We should remember the broken heart of Simon more than his misguided gesture. That will include our essay for this week. Next Wisdom Wednesday, we will continue in the New Testament as we look at Dr. Heiser's next essay titled, Paul's Lost Letters. I believe that you'll find this another interesting topic to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow we will continue with our three-minute humor nugget that will provide you with a bit of cheer, which will help you to lighten up and live a rich and satisfying life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and to come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,010 treks or read the Wisdom Journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek Podcast and Journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey. And then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.